Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel. It is spring football time in Tennessee. The Tennessee Volunteers football team has completed spring practice number one this morning. I want to talk about uh, the updated roster. We're going to talk about some position changes and just a few notes. I'm going to take from the article 24-7. Patrick Brown had some notes on there this morning. We'll take a few notes from that and then try to expand with my own thoughts on that as well. But thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you like, share, subscribe to this channel as well. And thank you guys for being with me for baseball and basketball at this point. Now it's time to get into the big boy ball and a little football in Tennessee. Also, you've not done a whole lot of football on here up to this point, just with it being when the channel started and being with uh, basketball in full swing, baseball getting into full swing. So I'm excited to really get fully into football as well. But, uh, you know, a couple of things I want to look at. First of all, so the updated roster, and you can get a copy of that actually on utsports.com. They have it updated as well. So I'm going to try to share my screen, just kind of go through this and look at some things that stand out to me on it. Because this is a, I'll tell you, man, I like this roster. I like what they've built on it. Now, we'll we'll kind of see what happens with that roster. But just looking at it here. So I'm going to look, uh, I'm going to kind of sort this thing by positions instead of numbers. So I'm looking at, as we see with the updated roster, you see a lot of the newcomers are enrolled. Jalen McMurray. DB transfer from Temple, Jermod McCoy from Oregon State's enrolled. Christian Charles uh, did read about he is out right now. Apparently, and, and I never heard this last year. If somebody did, you can correct me on it. He had a an Achilles injury, ACL injury last year that kept him out because I was wondering where he was at. I never heard or seen anything on him, but apparently he's still working a little bit on the side, was not a participant today. You got Christian Conyer. Uh, Turrentine, who will be a candidate to start at safety this year. I thought he was good in, uh, you know, his moments he got. Ricky Gibson, Boo Carter working at safety. He is enrolled. You got uh, Matthews Thomas, Farouk out of Baltimore or Columbia, Maryland. I think it's basically a suburb of Baltimore. If I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong on that, but he's uh, going to be looking at a safety six foot 190. Pretty good size. Here, uh, Caleb Beasley, he did just enroll this weekend. He and Edwin Spillman, uh, apparently they took some online courses and it allowed them to where they could enroll for the spring semester. And so they're enrolled at spring semester. They're ready to rock and roll. Those guys will be big additions to this team. Beasley at uh, cornerback, Spillman at linebacker. Christian Harrison, uh, son of Rodney Harrison. Uh, listed as a junior. I thought he was a red shirt sophomore, actually, but apparently not. I know he played some in the bowl game last year, not a lot beyond that, but I did see today he has switched positions and uh, he's working at safety. So if he's anything like his dad was, he may be a pretty good player for them as well. Uh, Jacoby Thomas transferred from Middle Tennessee. He is enrolled 6'2", 192. You got John Sauter, Marcus Gorey. Um, 6'1", 175, and from what I've seen about him, he may be an underrated pick for Tennessee just because of his speed, his size. So you look at that room right there. Now you've got a couple of walk-ons with experience here as well, and Will Brooks and William Wright. Now, do you want to have to rely on walk-ons? No, but these guys have played, and they have had to play meaningful snaps in the past due to numbers. But Willie Martinez saw this week, he got his contract extended for this year with no raise. It's a prove-it year for Willie Martinez. Oh, Willie's going to have to prove it. Darn it. He's gotten a lot of criticism over these few years. And um, you know, right or wrong about it, they did have to rebuild that room. But most of those guys who've been playing, it, it was just so weird to me how it happened at the end of the season. After the season, all your guys and pretty much most of them other than like Kamal Haddon and Jalen McCullough were eligible to come back. Those two were out of eligibility. Um, Judy Lawley had a chance, but he's going pro. So he decided to go ahead and test his uh, chances with the NFL. He could have came back, but you had so many guys in that secondary lead at Austin. Guys that played a lot of snaps last year. Just weird to me. Was it simply about them trying to get paid and Tennessee wouldn't pay them? Or was it, hey, we're ready for new blood? I know I was ready for new blood. I'm not going to sit and lie about it. I like Judy Lawley. I thought he did some decent things. Um, I think Jalen McCullough became maybe a bit underrated at times. He rated out, um, you see, grade-wise last year, he graded out as one of the top safeties in the whole country last year. I thought he definitely made improvements 
last year. There were some guys made some improvements, but we heard about all this young talent and we weren't seeing it. Now we're going to get a chance to see. We're going to get a chance to see what Willie Martinez is all about. All right. It's either basically crap or get off the pot time for Willie. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of talent. You let you saw what I just shared on that. A lot of talent in that room, and I liked it what they've added. I'm excited to see this secondary, and I hope they'll be a little more aggressive. And uh, I don't know, just th- there, there's been a lot of mind-blowing things in that secondary for a couple years. So we'll see if the uh, change in talent, change in uh, personnel possibly plays in that. So I'm going to go back to the roster again a little bit. So let's go on down and look at the defensive line. So you got Elijah Simmons back, Joshua, Joshua Josephs, Bryson Eason, Thomas, James Pierce Jr. I think you can Barring something wild, I think James Pierce Jr., this will be it for him this coming year, his final season. And frankly, guys, let's be honest. Do you want those guys around for four years? Yes. But, you know, at what points, too, in the world of recruiting, do you need to have these three-year guys that leave and get drafted early? If James Pierce Jr. is a top 10 pick after three years, great. I want him to go. That that looks good on the program. That looks good on Rodney Garner for developing these Guys, and it's going to make guys want to come to Tennessee. There's a lot of talent on this line, though. Caleb Herring, sophomore uh, Bradley, who was pretty highly rated coming out of Missouri. Uh, Tyree Weathersby, who they were high on before he got injured last year. Tyree West. Um, Amit, he must be a he's, uh, walk-on. Davin Hobbs, Omar Norman Lott's back. You got uh, Lindstrom is enrolled. I'm just going through the uh, scholarship guys. Dominic Bailey's back. Nathan Robinson is back. Jason Jenkins, Jackson Moy transfer from Stanford. This should be a very deep defensive line. Should be very deep with a lot of good players on it. And then um, look at the linebackers. Arian Carter, I've seen he has been out right now. So he's still recovering from his, his injury back in the fall. So is Elijah Herring. They're both back. Keenan Pilly comes back for his... 10th year of college. I don't know what it's like his sixth or seventh year that he's getting, but they missed him last year. He was missed. He just a little bit. We saw him. He would have made a difference in that linebacking core. Jeremiah Tillander, Jalen Smith, Caleb Perry, Edwin Spillman's enrolled. Uh, let's see any more scholarship guys. I'm trying to find that's it. So it's still a little, a little thin, I believe. So, um, you know, you got some guys that will enroll later on to hopefully add to that as well. So I I would have liked to have seen them add a little bit more to the linebacking core. But uh, William Inge, the new linebackers coach coming from Washington, actually technically Alabama, but he'd been at Washington. I, I like that hire. I think he's honestly an upgrade over Brian Jean-Marie. And I thought Jean-Marie did a good job of restocking that linebacker room as it was it was rough when he inherited it. But I think it's time to take that next step as there's still just too many things that I saw. Maybe it's a, a combination of youth. I don't, I don't know what it was. I just, you know, like with Aaron Beasley last year, and I think he was hurt a lot of the year, uh, just kind of beat up. So I think that may have played into him. But I thought he was inconsistent, and maybe the injuries had a bit to do that. But I just thought that linebacker core needed something else. And um, I like this guy coming in. This guy has been around for a while. Seems like he'd be a good teacher as well. And you always like a good teacher. Now, of course, Tennessee, you know, had Jean Marie, they had uh, Jerry Mack. Seems like they did pretty good with their uh, running backs coach hire Sims from Cincinnati. But I'll be honest, it's going to be hard to replace Jerry Mack. Now, if Jerry Mack was running the rotation running backs, I think the rotations could at times be improved on it. There was times I didn't get them. But um, other than that, Jerry Mack did a heck of a job with running backs, Tennessee. He'll be missed. But uh, Sims will have a chance to come in and, you know, add to that room. As you go have Dylan Sampson, you got to look at Dylan Sampson the same as you did with Jalen Wright. Possibility, this is it for him this year. Cam Seldon, you know, Peyton Lewis, I saw he is enrolled, but he's hurt. He will be out for the spring. It was evidently a pre-existing injury. He went in and got surgery on, so hopefully he'll be good to go come uh, the fall. Khalifa Keith is back. He's a big guy. He's a bigger dude. I would like to see some. Under uh, center, short yardage situations with that type of running back this year. I've always kind of been puzzled at their short yardage plays more times than not. They've not been good in short yardage. They definitely were not last year. 
when they went for it. And that was from game one. Started in game one. It was a problem all year long. But, um, you know, just kind of looking at some things. They, Tennessee had Spragans, Reddick, and Brian Grant all out. Brew McCoy, Nathan Leacock out at receiver. Christian Charles out. Arian Carter, Elijah Herring, and Peyton Lewis. All those guys were out. And then there was uh, – who did I see down here? It was uh, Carrick, the lineman who had transferred from Texas. He was not seen – today so not sure what was going on there trevor duncan a redshirt freshman he has moved from the defensive line to the offensive line apparently uh christian harrison i mentioned earlier working with the safeties today they talked about lance hurd talked about a couple of the transfers a little bit again this is from 24 7 sports patrick brown had the article that talked about lance hurd 66 335 working at left tackle nico's gonna be pretty happy with that i believe uh Holden stays the transfer to Notre Dame tied in 6'4, 242. So that uh he should step right in and bet an asset to them for sure. Good size that said that he was blocking well from what time they saw on it as well. Uh some of your freshmen, you know, numerous freshmen. The interesting thing they to me they had on the line here was you had Hurd at left tackle, left guard, they had Dane Davis, they had Sham uh Umaroff and Max Anderson working at left guard. Of course, when Spragans gets back as well, I think there's going to be some big competition at that position. It kind of looks like Jackson Lampley, right guard. That was the – he graded out pretty good in the bowl game, and I think that was kind of – so I'm happy for Jackson Lampley after all these injuries he's had on extra points over the years. I mean, poor guy, the, the injury bug and extra points just bit him so often that it's just miraculous that he made it this far. To where he may possibly start his senior year. Uh, if you know the joke, you know the joke on that. But uh, spring practice, one's in the books. Don't know how much information you'll get throughout as the media doesn't have a lot of access. They get, I did see where they said they will have, be able to watch more tomorrow. And um, didn't see anything about the quarterbacks today on here. Of course, that's going to be, you know, Nico's going to be the big, big story. How's he progress? Where does he go? Merklinger is enrolled. You got Gastamore. You got Navy Schuler. So you're going to have four guys. I think the pecking order is going to be pretty clear on that as well. But, you know, what I like seeing is the improved depth of that secondary. I think this defense this year is going to take a step forward. I really do. I feel there is uh, that probability that they take a step forward this year. And they need to. You know, people said, well, with this offense, you can't have a good defense. You can. You just have to have depth for it. If you only have one, you know, your first team and second string, if the debt, you know, they're miles apart in terms of ability, yeah, you're going to have trouble with that when you're on the field a lot. But if you build that depth, then they have to have it. Defensive line, linebacker, and secondary. They're getting close to that. I don't know where this defense will be this year, but I think we're getting close to seeing consistent defenses in Knoxville. I have a feeling we're going to see a high-powered offense this year. More thoughts about that as the week goes along. But I'm about getting close to 14 minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, later today, I will uh, record and release a preview for the Xavier baseball game. Tomorrow night, Tennessee looks to bounce back from a disappointing weekend in Alabama. And I'll uh, kind of look at the tournament draw and stuff this week. I honestly contemplated doing like a live pick em, pick the tournament show later on tonight i'm still i may do something impromptu but if you get this and would be interested in getting on and we pick a bracket then that might be kind of fun not sure i will but if, if it does it'll be around seven eight o'clock tonight but uh my name's frank rock house of orange sports channel thank you guys for tuning in have a great monday and go vols mm -hmm.